Hey, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to look at how to use Action Cable to broadcast turbo streams over WebSockets. And I have one important detail you want to be aware of before you ship any of this to production. But first, let's get broadcasts working. So let me step back for a second here to take a look at what we're trying to do. The goal is to be able to update different browser windows when something happens on the application level without any interaction on the user's part and without reloading the entire page. So the example I'm using is a list of users that gets updated in real time when a new user signs up or when someone logs in or if the user's attributes change or even if the user gets removed from the database. All of those events get pushed to the user's browser via WebSockets as they happen. And not only that, but with the help of Turbo Streams, the UI can update just the relevant parts of the page without having to do a full page reload. So let's see it in action. I'm going to register a new account by going to the sign up page and filling in the registration form. And as soon as I do that, you can see there's an online status indicator marked with green here. Now, if I open a different browser on the right side here, while I'm still logged in in the browser on the left, you'll see it does show the correct online status. Let's create another account in the browser on the right. And as soon as the user gets created in the database, you can see it shows up in the list of users and its online status is reflected as well. So if I sign out of my account, you'll see that the online status gets updated without me even touching the browser window on the left. And if I sign in again, you'll see the status gets updated again. The same is true if I sign out in the browser on the left. The users list on the right gets updated. All this is pretty cool and it feels responsive. Before we look at how this works behind the scenes, I want to let you know that I'm building a new Rails course which will teach you everything there is to know about Hotwire, Action Cable, and everything in between so you get confident in your ability to ship high quality Rails applications to production. Check out the link here if you want to learn more. Now let's look at the code. We have device installed, which takes care of user registration and login logic, and we're listing all the users on the home page here. We're also adding the Turbo Stream From helper at the top of the page, and we're giving it the name of the Action Cable channel we want to subscribe to. This helper will generate a Turbo Cable Stream source tag with a channel of Turbo Stream's channel and a stream name that is a signed version of our user's list string. So when the page gets rendered, it opens a WebSocket connection to the cable endpoint and subscribes to an action cable channel on the server. If we take a look at the messages tab, we can see there is a subscribe message that gets sent to the server with the stream name that we saw in the page source. And there is also a subscription confirmation message coming back from the server with the same identifier. Another thing to note is that every table row defined in this user partial has a unique ID so that we can target it in the turbo stream response. Inside the controller action for the home page, we're just retrieving the users list. But in order to hook into those state change events and push updates via the WebSockets channel, we need to add some callbacks to the user model. Namely, when we create a new user record, we want to prepend the user's div with the user partial. And because of naming conventions, we don't have to specify the name of the partial or the partial's local variables because Rails can find it for us. So when the callback runs, we broadcast a Turbo Stream message to everyone that has subscribed to this user's list channel. We can confirm that by signing out or back in and looking either in the Messages tab or through the log messages. And we also have callbacks for when the record gets updated or removed. The difference here is that we're targeting the user's row, not the entire user's div. That's why we need that ID in the partial so that we can identify records when we push messages over the channel. And because this logic lives in the model, we can trigger updates even from the Rails console, not just the browser. For example, if we change the name of our last user from John to Johnny, we can see it instantly shows up in the browser. And the same goes for his online status. If we change it to true, we can see the green dot showing up on the page. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that there is something you need to be aware of before you ship all this to production. And it has to do with the fact that these broadcasts happen synchronously. So you're blocking the main thread and you don't want to do that in production. 
What you want is to trigger them asynchronously by moving them to a background job, and you can do that by appending the later to suffix to the create and update callbacks. The remove callback doesn't have an async version. And now, if we go to the console and trigger one of these messages, you'll see they get enqueued using active job instead of being run synchronously. I hope you found this video useful, and if you want to learn more about Hotwire, check out my Hotwire playlist, which I've linked in the description. Bye!